In this chapter, you will see historical analysis of two issues in Philippine history which are connected to our present day problems. These issues are agrarian reform and Philippine constitutional change. Let us take a look first at agrarian reform. Do you know that the agrarian problem in the Philippines is a 400 years struggle of Filipino peasant farmers? Starting with Sulaiman Revolt in 1571 at Pangkusay Tondo, the Bas Friar lands grabbed in 18th and 19th centuries by the Spanish priests, the American agrarian policies in early 1900s, Escalante Massacre in 1985, Menjola Massacre in 1987, Hacienda Luisita Massacre, 2004, up to protests and violent incidents in the recent years until 2020. Studies show that this is one of the major root causes of our present problems on poverty, rebellion, criminality, insurgency, diaspora of Filipinos abroad, and many others. Before the Spaniards came to the Philippines, Filipinos lived in Balangay or Barangay, ruled by Datu, Raha, and Sultan. The accounts of Pigapeta and Plasencia in the earlier chapters of this course showed to us that social system during the pre-colonial period was comprised of the Maharlika, Aliping na Mamahay, and Aliping sa Gigilir. Despite the existence of different classes in early Filipino society, practically everyone had access to the fruits of the soil. We call this communalism. Money was unknown, and rice and other commodities served as the medium of exchange while gold was normally produced in many parts of the country. All these were in consonance with the early laws such as Kaingin system, Maragtas code, and the Luaran code in Mindanao. In short, our ancestors owned their lands and enjoyed the benefits of their production. We all know that Spain began to colonize the Philippines in 1565. The concept of encomienda or royal land grants was introduced by the Spaniards during the three centuries colonization. This system grants that encomenderos must defend their hacienda or encomienda from external attack, maintain peace and order within, and support the missionaries. In turn, the encomendero acquired the right to collect tribute from the native Indios. The system, however, degenerated into abuse of power by the encomenderos. The so-called tribute soon became land rents to a few powerful landlords and the natives who once cultivated the lands freely were transformed into mere share tenants. Many lands of Indios were grabbed by the encomenderos and friars. This is how the agrarian problem in the country started. Although there were agrarian policies of the Spaniards, which include the 1865 land registration law, Le Hypothic Hypothecaria or Mortgage Law of 19, 1893 and the Maura Law. These, however, were used to deceive the native Indios. Thus, the abuses led to several revolts of the natives. In 1585, the native Kapampangan revolted against Spanish encomenderos, primarily due to land-grabbing practices and abuses of the Spaniards. 
the revolutionaries plotted to attack Intramuros. However, the plot failed before it was even implemented because a Filipina married to a Spanish soldier reported the plot to Spanish authorities. Because of this, the leaders of the revolt were arrested and executed. In 1754, one of the agrarian revolts happened in the present-day Calabarzon, specifically in Batangas, Laguna, Cavite, and Bulacan. Filipino landowners rose in arms over the land grabbing of Spanish friars, with native landowners demanding that Spanish priests return their lands on the basis of ancestral domain. The refusal of the Spanish priests resulted in much rioting, resulting in massive looting of convents and burning of churches and even ranches. The case was eventually investigated by Spanish officials and was even heard in the court of King Philip IV, in which he ordered that the priests should return the lands to the Indios. However, the priests successfully appealed the agrarian case using their influence. So, no land were returned to the native landowners. After several decades, the anger of Filipinos grew Thus, the revolution started. In 1898, the first Philippine Republic was born. General Emilio Aguinaldo declared in the Malolos Constitution his intention to confiscate large haciendas, and most especially the so-called friar lands. However, the Republic was short-lived as a result of Aguinaldo's plan was never implemented by his government. After the defeat of the Filipino forces against the American troops, the new colonizers realized that being landless was the main cause of social unrest and revolt in the country at the time. The Americans sought to put an end to the miserable conditions of the tenant tillers and small farmers by passing several land policies which intended to benefit Filipinos. Significant legislations were enacted during the American period. First, the Philippine Bill of 1902 which set the limits on the number of hectares of land that landowners may acquire, 16 hectares for private individuals and 1,024 hectares for corporations. Another is the Land Registration Act of 1902 which provided for a comprehensive registration of land titles under the torrent system. Furthermore is the Public Land Act of 1903 which introduced the homestead system in the Philippines. Lastly, the Tenancy Act of 1933 which regulated relationships between landowners and tenants of rice and sugarcane lands to 50-50 sharing. However, the torrent system which the Americans in instituted for the registration of lands did not solve the problem completely because a large number of Filipinos were not aware of the law and also they could not pay the survey cost and other fees required in applying for a torrent's title. In 1935, during the Commonwealth government, President Manuel L. Quezon formed the Social Justice Program to end the increasing social unrest for many areas in the country and most especially in central Luzon. The significant agrarian reform legislations enacted during the Commonwealth period were first, the 1935 Constitution, which stipulated that the promotion of social justice to ensure the well-being and economic security of all people should be the concern of the state. In 1936, Commonwealth Act No. 178 provided for certain controls in the landlord-tenant relationships. In the same year, the National Rice and Corn Corporation was created. 
this agency settled the prices of rice and corn in the country, thereby helping the poor Filipino tenants. In 1937, Commonwealth Act 461 was also passed into a law. This was the first law that protected the rights of tenants against arbitrary dismissal. While in 1939, the Rural Program Administration was created, wherein this provided the purchase and lease of many haciendas in the archipelago. Lastly, Commonwealth Act No. 441 established the National Settlement Administration, which helped the landless Filipinos own lands for their families. RA 4054, or the Rice Tenancy Law, was Quezon's major agrarian policy. But the problem was, this law has been hardly implemented because most of the municipal councils that time were composed of powerful hacienderos and big landlords. During the Second World War, many Filipino native farmers turned to guerrilla fighters against the Japanese forces. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines in 1942 resulted to more peasants and workers who revolted not only for freedom but also for their continued fight to recover their lands. Members of this group were called Hukbalhap or Hukbong Bayan Laban sa Manghapon. Many landlords who supported the Japanese lost their lands to peasants. Unfortunately, the end of World War II resulted to more disgruntled peasants, so the cause of the Huk Balahap continued even years after the Japanese invasion, and they became problems of Philippine society after the war. After Philippine independence was proclaimed by the Americans in 1946, the problems of land tenure remained, plus the terrorism done by the members of the Hukbalhap to many towns in the country. The agrarian situation became worse in certain areas, particularly in Luzon. To address this, President Manuel Rojas initiated the enactment of the following laws. First, Republic Act No. 34, which established the 70-30 sharing arrangements and regulating share tenancy contracts, giving much of the harvest of lands to tenants. Unfortunately, the implementation of the law was confronted with problems due to lack of support facilities and capital. The farmers were forced to resell their lands to the landowners. This failure gave basis to doubt of the real meaning of land reform program among common Filipino people. Second, Republic Act 55, which provided for a more effective safeguard against arbitrary eviction of tenants from their lands. It was however unfortunate that President Rojas died because of a heart attack. He was replaced by his vice president, Elpidio Quirino. During President Quirino's administration, the following were his agrarian policies. First is the Executive Order 355, which established the National Land Settlement Administration, which took over the responsibilities of the Agricultural Machinery Equipment Corporation and the RICE and Corn Production Administration. This, in fact, favored much the Filipino peasants. In 1953, President Ramon Magsaysay was elected into office. During his term, Congress enacted the following agrarian reform laws. First, Republic Act 1160, which established the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration, also known as NARA. This resettled the dissidents and landless farmers, including rebel returnees, and 
provided residential lots and farmlands in Palawan and in Mindanao. Republic Act 1199, which governed the relationship between landowners and tenant farmers by organizing share tenancy and leasehold system. The law did not only provide the security of tenure of tenants but also created the Court of Agrarian Relations. Another law is the Republic Act 1400. This law established the Land Tenure Administration of the country, which was responsible for the acquisition and distribution of large rice and corn lands over 200 hectares for individuals and 600 hectares for corporations. Lastly, Republic Act 821, which provided small farmers and share tenants loans with low interest rates. Unfortunately, in 1957, President Magsaysay died in a plane crash and Vice President Carlos P. Garcia replaced him. Garcia continued the agrarian reform program of President Magsaysay. Records show that there was no new land and agrarian reform legislation passed, passed during his administration. When Josdado Macapagal was elected as president in 1961, his landmark agrarian law was Republic Act 3844, also known as the Agri Agricultural Land Reform Code of the Philippines, which abolished the share tenancy, institutionalized leasehold, set retention limit at 75 hectares. The law also invested rights on preemption and redemption for tenant farmers. It also provided for an administrative machinery for implementation institutionalized a judicial system of agrarian cases. It also incorporated extension, marketing, and supervised credit system of services for farmer beneficiaries. The law was hailed as one that would emancipate Filipino farmers from bondage of tenancy. In 1965, President Ferdinand Marcos was elected to the office of the president. Several of his agrarian policies were RA 6389 and RA 6390 series 1971, which created the Department of Agrarian Reform and Agrarian Reform Special Account Fund. This law strengthened the position of farmers and expanded the scope of agrarian reform in the country. Another is Presidential Decree Number no. 2, Series 1972, which declared the country under land reform program. Another is Presidential Decree Number no. 27, Series 1972. This law restricted land reform scope to tenanted rice and corn lands and set the retention limit to 7 hectares. When Corazon Aquino became president of the country in 1986, she first worked for the ratification of the constitution that stipulates the state shall promote comprehensive rural development and agrarian reform by virtue of section 21 of article 2 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. On June 10, 1988, President Aquino signed into law RA 6657, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law. This was her landmark agrarian reform policy this law instituted a comprehensive agrarian reform program to promote social justice and industrialization in the country. 
1992, President Fidel Ramos was elected to presidency. His administration came face to face with people who have lost confidence in the agrarian reform program in the country. His administration committed to the vision fairer, faster, and more meaningful implementation of the agrarian reform program. The agrarian laws during his term were first RA 7881 which exempted fish ponds and prawns from coverage of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, Executive Order 363, which limits the type of lands that may be converted, RA8435, which modernized agriculture and fisheries in the country. Lastly, RA8532, this law expanded the National Fund for the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program and extended its implementation for another 10 years. In 1998, President Joseph Ejercito Estrada became the president of the country. His administration was known for era para sa mahirap propaganda. This was the battle cry that made him very popular during the 1998 presidential elections. President Estrada initiated the enactment of the following agrarian laws. First, Executive Order 151, which created the Farmers Trust Fund that gave access to long-term capital to small farmers. During his administration, President Estrada launched the Magkabalikat para sa Kaunlarang Agrario or Magkasaka. Its concept was for investors to bring in capital, technology, and management support while the farmers contribute using their land. In short, partnership towards development. However, the Estrada's administration was short-lived. The people who put him into office demanded for his resignation in People Power Revolution II. He was succeeded by his Vice President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo in 2001. The Agrarian Reform Program under the Arroyo administration is anchored on the vision to make the countryside economically viable for the Filipino family by building partnership and promoting social equity and new economic opportunities towards lasting peace and sustainable rural development. Her administration worked for land tenure improvement through land distribution and leasehold. Along with land distribution, her administration programmed credit assistance extension services, irrigation facilities, roads and bridges, marketing facilities, including training and technical support programs for farmers. She also created rural economic zones, which help in the creation of job opportunities in the countryside. The Kalahi Agrarian Reform Zones were also loans primarily to achieve greater agro-productivity. She also empowered the Department of Agrarian Reform towards agrarian justice. In 2010, President Simeon Benigno Aquino III was elected as president. Pinoy promised to revitalize the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, or CARP, which was the landmark program of her mother's administration. He distributed their family-owned Hacienda Luisita Interlac to their centuries-long tenants. Under his administration, the Agrarian Reform Community, Connectivity and Economic Support Services or ARCES project was created to contribute to the overall goal of rural poverty reduction 
especially in agrarian reform areas. The Agrarian Production Credit Program was created and this provided credit support to crop production to many farmers and related organizations. Aquino's administration also worked for the legal case monitoring system, which was a web-based legal system for recording and monitoring various kinds of agrarian cases at the provincial, regional, and central offices of DAR. This ensured faster resolution and close monitoring of agrarian-related cases. We all know, in 2016, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte was elected into office. Under his leadership, the President wants to pursue an aggressive land reform program that would help alleviate the life of poor Filipino farmers by prioritizing the provision of support services along land distribution. The President directed the DAR to launch the second phase of agrarian reform where landless farmers would be awarded with undistributed lands under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program of past administrations. President Duterte proclaimed that all public lands, including military reserves, will be under agrarian reform. The President also placed 400 hectares of agricultural lands in Boracay under CARP. His administration also created an anti-corruption task force to investigate and handle reports on alleged anomalous activities by officials and employees of the Department of Agrarian Reform. The department also pursues an off-plan zero backlog in the resolution of cases in relation to agrarian justice delivery and to fast-track the implementation of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. In the next video, the issue on constitutional changes will be discussed.